Hey everyone, welcome back to Historical Progression in Kerbal Space Program. This time we are going to continue with the Apollo missions, and this is going to be a, another test mission before the numbered Kerbal missions. Here are the engines firing up, the clamps are gone, and the solid rocket boosters have kicked in. Yeah, this is the Saturn 1B that you saw me make last video, and what we're going to be launching today is a bit more of an actual yeah, an actual mission. This is going to be la launching the Pegasus uh, micrometeorite satellite which is something that they launched uh, within the boilerplate of um, what would have been like, if you think about it, Apollo minus two um, would have been at the one and it was housed within an aerodynamic shell boilerplate of the service module, and that's what I've tried to do here. You remember last video I built in the first section the the, the shell of a of service module out of structural components. Well, I did that deliberately rather than just using a fuel tank so that I could fill the empty space like they did in real life. The uh, Pegasus micrometeorite satellite, as you can see my solid rocket engines have just cut out, but I'm still making good good altitude and good speed. The uh, Pegasus was basically a... It was to, to quench fears, because they didn't know at this stage where the micrometeorites that had been detected in, in satellites, whether they would be dangerous to the hull of the astronauts in the crew service module as they were going to the moon. So basically they sent it up to receive as many pings and attacks from all these little particles and it would measure the density of the material, the size of the particle as well as its velocity on impact and how many layers of hull it would go through. Now it, it, it seems pretty obvious I guess that this is something that needed to be worked out but back then you have to remember that they didn't know. This isn't something you can do theoretically. They had no indication for for what was out there. And you can see that my Saturn 1B has an actual secondary stage now. That's to provide propulsion for the Pegasus satellite. And we're just trying to circularize it as much as possible with this stage. Um, we want it to return eventually with and burn up, but we also want to use as much of it as we can so that we save fuel on the Pegasus stage. And that's not too bad. As you can see from the atmospheric calculations, the red part means within atmosphere. So it's going to come back. And there we have it now. You can see we're ditching the Saturn 1B stage. And a slow propulsion just to take it away from this fairing. As Oh, very nice drift away. And then we've got the moon and Kerbin in shot. Yeah, so as this drifts away, let's have a look at that from the outside. We are dropping the main stack, and that's going to leave a very efficient monopropellant engine and a monopropellant tank. And in this crew service module is the Pegasus micrometeorite satellite. We do need to give ourselves a little bit of a boost, um, but if we do that, the crew service vehicle will never return. So we're going to ditch that now. I said we're going to ditch that now. Using the uh, RCS to try and force myself out, but it appears not to be working. Um, this is a problem sometimes with KW Rocketry's decouplers, that they just, uh, they're a bit too sticky. So, um, yeah, let's uh, go, oh, the quick save was here, so that's not too far back. Let's try that. Let's try that again. So we decouple the main stage start the engine, move ourselves away, and um, let's uh, just give us a little bit of a kick on the service module, and that's not doing anything. It's still stuck. Okay, uh, let's try one more time. And what I ended up having to do, as you can see here, it actually decoupling from inside, is I had to have a little bit of a play around with the save, the quick save. 
but here we go we're now separating the boiler plate for the crew service module that would be a fuel tank in an actual mission but what we have here is and you can just kind of see on the left this kind of gantry shape and it's going to become very obvious very soon why this mission was called Pegasus from the outside uh, let's uh, deploy our antenna and the finally we're going to deploy the wings of Pegasus I'm using uh, solar arrays but in real life these were electromagnetic detectors that could pick out the the impact of micrometeorites very swish a uh, little bit of a problem with clipping with that antenna there and obviously seeing as we have no batteries we have to use this actually for its power in Kerbal Space Program but yeah that's uh, that is the Pegasus mission just moving out of the way of the uh, dead and destined to return to Kerbin service module to try and I'm trying to do this without you looking at the instrumentation that should be vaguely prograde so let's move us around there and give a bit of a kick of the main engine to uh, keep us above 70k that's the magic number and therefore in orbit when you see the red stuff disappear that means that uh, the atmospherics mod has detected that we have no drag okay there we go now again to arrange the solar panels so they're actually in range of the sun the good thing about these solar panels is that they do track just uh, I want it to look pretty as well as track and there you have it that's the Pegasus now why was the Pegasus important I've already mentioned the micrometeorites but actually what it helped do was many other things such as develop an understanding of the Van Allen radiation belts uh, lots of other kind of radiation based um, things that were known about but were not deliberately experimented I mentioned in one of my earlier videos when I was looking at the Explorer probe from NASA that the Explorer probe detected a radiation belt around the Earth, but the thing is, that was just by the by. The, uh, as you can see now, the uh, Saturn 1B debris coming back. Yeah, that was just by the by. Uh, this Pegasus, Pegasus 1, Pegasus 2, and Pegasus 3, because there were three of them, um, helped to actually launch an understanding of where they were, the outer borders of these radiation belts. So, therefore, the duration of radiation that the uh, astronauts would be exposed to and also because there were three missions it meant that the upper stage which is known as the uh, Saturn 4 was given a lot of practice and that made for a more efficient crew rated vehicle in the eventual moonshots and if uh, you've been watching my Buzz Aldrin's race into space you know that repetition is a very important part of the space program because it will mean that uh, well you got more times to make mistakes before you put a person in there. And Deadly Reentry is doing a very, very pretty job with this. The uh, the atmospheric fins are giving it a bit of a kick around, and wow, that took uh, that took pretty well, don't you think? Uh, what about the uh, the crew service vehicle? Still just about out of space, but it looks like it's getting a bit of tug now from the atmosphere. Again, there's no parachutes or anything in this. It is just a aerodynamic shell um, to test the movement through the atmosphere. There were various boilerplates used. Some of them recreated mass. Some of them um, tested upper stage engines and things like that. It was one system at a time, which added to the cost of the Saturn V uh, program and the Apollo program. But the important thing to remember is that for every dollar spent on the Apollo program, Oh wow, look at the fire. Every dollar spent brought $14 back. So that's why we need to invest in space. Many reasons, but you know, some people just can't picture the wonder and amazement of space. So they need to imagine it in, you know, money terms. And this doesn't look like it's going to explode. It looks like the uh, the escape tower is providing a nice ballistic shield for the rest of the service module, like uh, the nose cone on space shuttle does 
So I'm pushing the hot air around the side of the service vehicle, which is not what I wanted. I wanted it to explode, but I guess that's not what I'm going to get. Well, this is going to be my last video in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. The upcoming videos are in beta, 0.9. So uh, expect a little bit of a, a jump in the career mode and things like that as I'm trying to get things back up to speed. But, you know, I'm going to be continuing with everything, and I hope you guys continue to watch. I love making videos, and I love more when people are actually watching them. So, thanks a lot, guys. See you next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. Remember, if you like this video, you can show your support by liking, subscribing, or commenting on the video itself on YouTube. Or you can head over to Patreon, and you can check out my channel where you can help from as little as one US dollar, one oost, can really change my life, change the channel, head over, check out the rewards, see if it's something you'd be interested in. If not, just leave a comment, I'm happy to read everything, and they really make a big difference to me and my channel. Thanks guys, see you for the next video.